Welcome to People Doing Good for Others. Welcome to People Doing Good for Others, where we praise and celebrate and hold in the light those who truly make significant contributions in our communities. I'm Gary York, and I'm grateful to be with you today. We want to thank Wilkes Communications and River Street Productions and Network and WIFM for this opportunity. My featured guests today are uh, two Kind of new friends to my immediate left is Ms. Pat Gibson. Uh, she's with the Wake Forest Baptist Health and she's also director of the Epilepsy Information Services. Has a toll free number that's been in existence since back in the 70s and has had over 500,000 calls. So she's uh, an advocate for recovery and helping folks with epilepsy. To her left is uh, Jim Mitchell and he was a victim for years with epilepsy and uh, we're going to talk about uh, how it happens uh, and how we can work with those who maybe don't have money for, or for medicine. Uh, Ms. Gibson is involved in raising money for folks who can't afford to uh, have the medicine that helps with seizures. So good morning to you, friends. I'm good so morning. happy a that pleasure. you're here. Jim, right. good to have you. So uh, I think it'd be a good idea to start with uh, Ms. Gibson, how you came to Winston-Salem. Well, actually I was given to the medical school, which was then Bowman Gray School of Medicine, now Wake Forest, uh, by the University of Virginia as a part of an NIH grant to develop a comprehensive epilepsy program. It was believed by the doctors who established that, that epilepsy was a very complicated disorder that needed more than just handing someone a prescription. There, there's so much more to it. It has major impact. And that it needed to be treated by a whole team of people you know, pharmacology and social work and psychology. There's so many issues involved with this disorder. And that's how I first came to North Carolina, and that was in 1976. And so uh, you met Jim's mother and daddy in Raleigh? I was actually, uh, since I have been here, I've always gone out into communities to try to educate, and all across the state. I've been in every county many, many places and many, many times. And so you'd I, be available to come back up here and, and do a talk for absolutely. our community? Absolutely. Bring Jim with We've you. We've done a workshop here. It's been a few years, but we need to do another one, and I would okay. be delighted to do so. All right. But I was giving a talk in Raleigh, and these, this couple came up to me, and it was Jim's parents, and they asked me. They said they had a son with epilepsy who was having a very bad time, whose seizures were not controlled, and they asked my help. Would I be willing to work with their son to see if we might find a better answer? And so I began working with Jim in 1977. Wow. And so you uh, went on to North Carolina State, graduated, mm -hmm. and uh, moved to King and started a, a nursery greenhouse operation with your wife, Judy, and son, Jay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jim, tell us about having seizures and, and what life was like for you. Uh. It was pretty tough. It really was. The seizures I had, I could not feel coming on. There was no little aura or uh, message coming that the seizure was about to occur. So I would fall to the ground, uh, hit the gravel, scrape the face, just all sorts of stuff. If I was driving at that time, I still had a driver's license. I could have a wreck or just stop in the middle of the road. Uh, it affected a lot of my life, but I always felt like I was really fortunate that my seizures started when I was a child because as they developed and got worse, I had no other 
meaning for a lot, you know, I'd had them all my life, so I didn't know any different than having seizures. I think it'd be real tough to be that 30 year old and the seizures start as right. bad as mine had gotten. It's, but it can, it can happen that way. It can happen it, at yeah. any age, right? at any time. Wow. Oh, the most common time is from birth to 10. Okay. age range and then after 55 it goes straight up so uh, as you age your risk becomes greater and greater at having seizures wow. but it can happen to anyone at any time for any number of reasons all right let's uh, now go to the funding part and uh, part of your uh, your outreach your ministry is about raising money for folks who well, need it, help the program that i do it, i have to self-fund it's it's uh um, totally on donations and grants and and whatever I can scrape together. I'm doing constant fundraisers. I, there's many parts to this, and I was very fortunate to work with. And Jim has been a tremendous support. Uh, once he um, his seizures were controlled, he has paid back many times over. You know the help that he has received. He has been one of our top sponsors. He and uh, Pat Wheeler have been some of the top contributors to our epilepsy medication fund. And one of the programs I set up back in 1987, when I documented through my first 5,000 calls on the hotline, that one of the biggest needs in this state is there are a lot of people, a lot of the working poor, that really can't afford their medicine. And these medicines are terribly expensive, can be. Many of them can cost 1500 a month or 3000 a month or even more. And most people just can't afford that who don't have insurance or, or some kind of coverage. So we began working, you know, I wrote a bill and got it passed in the legislature and uh, got some money for a medication fund. And sadly, uh, all services to epilepsy were completely eliminated from the state budget in 2009. But we have been able to keep that, uh, the medication program going and the information line going, uh, thanks to a lot of people that support us. But this is a really big need in this state, is the need for help with medicine. We're seeing a bigger growing need all along as the medicines keep getting higher and higher. Wow. And as the, the uh, instance of, of the seizures, are they... Is it higher than it was, or is it about the same percentage it's a, of folks? It's about the same, I would say. It, but it's, it's offset. We've gotten better at helping and preventing some seizures by what we do in some ways. And at the same time, um, there's many things that people do to themselves that are very destructive that can cause um, seizures you know, by doing illegal drugs or uh, excessive alcohol, and which lowers the seizure threshold and can cause seizures. Oh, so wow. there's a lot of different things like that. We also have gotten much better at keeping people alive who would have died previously from very serious injuries or very serious illnesses that then go on to have seizures. So it's kind of balancing in, at both ends. We've gotten better at preventing seizures by uh, capturing things in the beginning and preventing illness and um, doing better with head injuries and things like that. But at the same time, we have the other end um, of destruction that's uh, right. uh, offsetting and causing people to have seizures. Jim, uh, your wife, Judy, you're in the growing things business and, and uh, being a minister of that outreach of uh, plants. And uh, just a little bit about Judy helping you along the way. And y'all were together for a long time before your operation in 95. Tell us about a little bit about, uh, you said she would drive you and you lost your license uh, yeah, because of it? We met, we were both studying horticulture at NC State and uh, got our degrees, graduated, came to King and uh, started a small nursery in our backyard in the late 70s. We're celebrating 40 years this year. Uh, we used to, one thing that I remember, a lot of my memory is gone, but i never forget uh, when we started mowing and a little basic landscaping. She would have to do the 
driving because I didn't have my license. And uh, I would usually do the riding around yards and she would do the weed eating and push mowing. And one day we were out doing some mowing and I decided to go right on across the yard we were doing around the business and hit the paved state road and it had a uh, paved a concrete pad on the other side and I hit that and the tires on the back of my riding mower just kept spinning. I was having a seizure and could not control the mower, did not realize it was coming on and rode right out into the road. Luckily, nobody ran over me or I didn't have a wreck on it, but she got it back. And uh, from that point on, she basically did the riding of the mowers and I did weeding and pushing. But she stayed behind me all these years. We've been married 40, 43 years now. And uh, she's been through a lot of ups and downs. She, she's the one that pushed me into the surgery. I mm -hmm. uh, had some testing done. They thought they'd located where this problem was in 95. And uh, she had just earlier, within the six months prior to that, been watching the news. And she had heard about three persons with seizures that had passed away, that had died during that period. And uh, she had come become real concerned. So we did the surgery that next week at Baptist Hospital. Mm -hmm. And had three episodes of seizures after the surgery. And the last seizure was May of 96. I was having 30 seizures a month. I would fall to the ground, and just wow. not control them with medicine. So, but I've been 20 some years now without seizures. Just Pat, tell for, us. For, for people who okay. have intractable seizures and, and who have a lot of seizures that are difficult to control, the caretaking is very tough. It's yeah. very hard. And if you don't have someone who loves you and cares for you and watches after you, it can be disastrous. Uh, so there's a great burden on, on the caretaker mm -hmm. for any chronic illness. Yeah. And they really are to be admired. When, when you uh, are invited to a, an event to be the keynote address or mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the questions that come out of those audiences pretty quickly? Or? <laughs> the first question and the most common question that people want to know, but many times are hesitant, hesitant to ask is, do I have epilepsy? Because I seem so passionate. Everybody is thinking, I wonder if she has that, you know? And that often, <laughs> someone will eventually get brave enough to say, uh, do you have epilepsy? And I don't, I have no personal reason for, for uh, being involved in this. Uh, but it is, and it has been a great honor to be able to do what I do. But a lot of the questions are, you know, what do you do when somebody has a seizure? Because many people who've not had any experience of this have no idea what to do. And they're scared, especially we're talking mostly about the convulsive type of seizure. Other people can have seizures and most, many people wouldn't even know they had it because some seizures are very subtle. But a big question and concern is what do you do? What do I do? What do I, you know, how do I help this person? Yeah. And it's actually quite simple with a convulsive seizure. And, and it is frightening. If for those of you who've seen a seizure for the first time, you know it, it's a, it leaves you feeling helpless and what, you know, scared, are they going to die? Most seizures just run their course and they come out of it, no matter what you and I do. But the, the best thing to do when you see someone having a seizure and they fall down and they've gotten all stiff and are jerking is when you can, roll them onto their side, left side preferably. And the reason you do that is that if you're on your back, one of the things you do when you have a seizure is you don't swallow and you can get a lot of saliva in your mouth. So if we roll the person onto their side, all that can drain out more right. easily. Then we do just common sense kind of things. Um, get things back out of their way. I've had patients kick their ankles and, and break them because nobody got that, that metal piece out of the way or bang their head into concrete. You put something under that head, something soft, if they're banging their head on concrete or the floor. And then you loosen the tie. They've got something tied on around their neck or if they have on glasses, take the glasses off. You don't want to break those glasses. They cost a lot of money. 
And then you, ju you do not put anything in their mouth. When you and I grew up, we were taught, oh, you've got to put a spoon in their mouth. You've got to put something in their mouth to keep them from swallowing their tongue. You can't swallow your tongue. It's, oh, it's attached. It's not going oh, to go anywhere. Okay. So you, but if you roll them onto their side, that can help the tongue to fall forward and, uh, and the saliva to drain out. Right. But don't put anything in the mouth. You, I've had a lot of damage done to my patients by things that people have crammed in their mouths. They put spoons and knives and handkerchiefs and all kinds of things. Um, you don't have to do that. And then it's helpful to time the seizure by your watch. Because when you get to the emergency room, we're gonna ask you, how long did it last? By your heart, it went on for an eternity. By, by your watch, it was less than a minute. So I always say, look at your watch to see how long that lasted, because we'd like to know. And most seizures run about a minute, a minute and a half, and that's it. And then, then just stay with that person and explain to them when they come out of it that they've had a seizure. They're going to be tired and groggy and confused. You just wait with them and then help them back up. And, they'll, and most people are fine. Jim, you, you're involved in significant outreaches in the King area. What are some of the other things that you do on a vol for, as a volunteer and uh, you're so active in, in your community? I guess the most meaningful relation I've got right now is with the special needs class at the high school, West Stokes High School. Uh, these students we do scouts with and uh, teach them what we can about basic talents and what they can do and merit badges and basic stuff for them to learn a little bit about. Try to take them camping. We're going camping with them this next weekend at Raven's Knob, and uh, they're going to be spending the night in the Adirondacks, the little open cabins. It's going to be kind of cold, but they, they're <laughs> welcome to go. They're wow. on the high right now, just excited <laughs> about going, and I am too. To be and you love to sing. I do. Yes, I, I, and he's good. <laughs> I'm with a, and he's been, he has sung at the White House a number of times. I'm with a group called the Cliff Notes. Mr. Cliff Arnold was a music teacher at South Stokes in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. They had a class reunion in the 90s and started a singing group called the Cliff Notes with him as their director. And uh, I guess it was in the late 90s, they were looking around for a tenor and I was asked to join. And since that time, I have, it's been a meaningful part of my life. We, you know, like Pat said, we have sung two different Christmases at the White House. We've sang it in Raleigh at our state capitol and that type thing too, as well as local churches. And uh, about once a month, we'll go out and sing. So, really. How about a person in recovery uh, from seizures? And uh, you're a tremendous advocate in helping uh, Pat Gibson with raising money. Uh, just what, uh, this need that you have to, to give in a special way right now. Just tell us about uh, before and after, if you will. Okay. Uh, I was real fortunate. Like I said, I was a, a pesticide inspector with the Ag Department when we moved to King, and I had a insurance with the state of North Carolina, you know, as one of their benefits. And uh, even after I lost my job, I kept that insurance. They ins kept my insurance on me. So I was real fortunate to have that uh, in 95, and even at that time, the cost of the procedure to do the surgery was pretty high. But we had insurance and could afford it. I could afford my medications all these years. There are so many people that have seizures that cannot hold a job down. They've never had insurance. And what little money they might have coming in each month, they got to decide, do I buy my medication? or do I eat? Right. So what I've tried to help with is this medication fund that persons mm -hmm. that can't afford that medicine have an option. Mm -hmm. And Pat is a real go-getter if we can supply at least a 30-day uh, mm -hmm. supply of their medicine. Well, how do you raise this money, Pat? Let's, let's oh, get right ways. into this. Oh, different ways. We do it. lots of fundraisers. Uh, we just had a big chili cook-off um, in uh, Winston-Salem. 
and that's one of our top fundraisers for the medication fund. And we have a number of events coming up in November. We have Evans Cornhole event, and we have that's the um, say, that's November 10th. And then we have uh, the uh, Tatum Trail 5K in Garner. Um, that and then we have Jim's Purple Pansy project. Tell us about yeah. Look tell at us that about shirt, that. that beautiful <laughs> shirt. Uh, purple is the color, color of, of epilepsy. epilepsy information service. Mm -hmm. uh, and at Mitchell's Nursery on November second, there will be six inch pots of pansies, kind of a purple and white mix in the flower, that will be sold, and one hundred percent of the money taken in from those will go to our medication fund. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Jim is past president of the Epilepsy Alliance, North Carolina. Now, what does that mean? Well, it, it's a volunteer organization. It used to be the Epilepsy Foundation of North Carolina, and they've changed names in this last year. We're now the Epilepsy Alliance, North Carolina, and I'm the volunteer director of that, and Jim is one of our past presidents. And this organization is, it helps us raise money for the medication fund. Is the well. hotline that you've mentioned, is that the way to, to find us, to get, get involved if someone's watching oh, this Oh, absolutely, morning? yes. We've got an 800 number that you can call and get information. 642-0500. Um, oh, you have a good memory. Oh, yeah. 1-800-642-0500. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You remember I told memory. you the story about the young girl <clears throat> that when I was teaching my first year, mm -hmm. Can't remember how it happened, but someone said uh, there's a, a young lady in your class that will ha may have a seizure, and that's frightening. Oh yeah. And she did. But they didn't Within, tell you didn't what, to do. what to do. And I know <clears throat> she was uh, clawing in her face, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we we got through that. But that. Not knowing is that, mm -hmm. is a, and that is exactly why I set up this this toll free number that people can call and get information, and uh, and you remember the story I told you, after Jim had been seizure free for a year or two, we always um, most always will try to pull them off of their medicine. They no longer need it. Many people. And uh, I had I was doing the big chili cook-off, and he appeared at the chili cook-off carrying a paper bag. And he handed it to me, and I opened it, and in that paper bag was all these money, lots and lots of money, $10, $20, all this money. And he said, here, Pat, this is all the money I would have paid for medicine last year when I was taken off. I've saved all of the money I would have paid, and I want you to take it and to buy somebody else's medicine with this. And since that day, he's been one of the biggest advocates for keeping this, this medication program going. And the group that we primarily help are the working poor. You know, the ones that are disabled often have Medicaid or Medicare, but it's the working poor, the one that makes almost nothing you know, out there that has no insurance, that what do they do? They cannot afford $1,500 a month for their medicine. And, and we, we want this state to be one that where no one goes without medicine due to lack of funds. So talk about, uh, let's go over again how uh, an interested individual could get involved. How could they... Well, they can, dial that they can dial that number. I have a mother right now uh, that uh, came to our chili cook-off. She's from Davidson County. A new a, person? A new person. Her, her child was uh, diagnosed recently. And they, like you, were very frightened. And they came and met with me. And we talked at length. And, and I helped them understand everything and know what to do. And wow. this family has been remarkable. They've raised all kinds of money for our medication fund. I mean, I never asked, I never said anything, but when they found out that there were people that were struggling, they have just gone overboard. And I just started getting checks recently from this, I didn't even know she was doing it. She's raised at least $1,600 in the last week for the medication fund. You know, I'm always fascinated by people who when something bad happens to them, 
Many people say, why me, woe is me, you know, and, and become all obsessed with the problem while other people look around and say, oh my goodness, I can't imagine having this and not being able to buy my child's medicine. I've got to help. It's, it's really different to see the, I mean, it's really interesting to see the difference in people and how they respond you know, to I bad was, things happening to them. I was drawn to uh, just by chance Mm -hmm. Just by chance at a social event in Mount Airy, sat at the table and to my immediate left was his wife, Judy, and then Jim. Mm -hmm. And just uh, immediately we were just kind of bonded in a special way. And so mm -hmm. uh, I've had a great gift given to me by that moment of meeting mm -hmm. him and, the, and his wife. And, um, you know, with the, his... Um, heart mm -hmm. it's easy yeah. to be drawn to what can i do mm -hmm. what, i want to be an advocate uh, let me tell me what to do so mm -hmm. your outreach is we're coming close to the end now we want to thank again our sponsors wilkes communications and river street productions um, just kind of wrap it up if both of you will have a couple moments to the end about uh, why we why we decided to do this today, if you will. Well, one of the things I want to say real quickly is that you may not know this, but research has shown that people who do good experience a physical, chemical change in their bodies. Their, their immune system goes up. Their, their, even the cells are changed when you do good. Even more fascinating to me, when you hear about someone doing good or you observe someone doing a kindness, you also change physically, chemically. Hmm. To, that is, a, I mean, to an improvement in you physically. You know, and this is why when, they, when people say, when you start feeling bad about yourself, go out and do something good for somebody. Right. Right. It helps, right. it changes. And what you're doing makes such a difference. Well, thank you. Yeah. How about you? Uh, let's. Uh... I, I want to shake your hand, sir, <laughs> and thank you. Kind of like Pat was saying, the time you've put into this and having yeah. us come on board and helping us get information out to persons that just that might not get it any other way. Yeah. yeah. I can't imagine what you've gone through. To I want to make stuff. sure we do some programs on WIFM, uh, the radio part of our ministry, if you will, about uh, awareness or. Mm -hmm. how we can help or okay. uh, this the what does it mean how does it work you know i think that mm -hmm. would be good for our radio mm -hmm. station yeah i can sure. send you some psas yeah. for your for the month of november yeah i will send that to you sh shortly yeah mm -hmm. just uh go ahead and how about the gratitude of uh, how things have went through hard times but today the opportunities that we have are just incredible mm -hmm. Never, never know what tomorrow, kind of like the NC State coach once said, never give up. Right. And uh, I think persons with seizures, families that have persons with seizures or friends, uh, just stick in behind them and never give up on the chance that they may be you seizure don't know. free. Mm -hmm. You never know. Never know. So end with uh, telling us your phone number again. and uh, It's 1-800-642. 0500. And the gratitude that you have for being presented or asked to, to do this in the 70s, uh, just go from there. It's just such bit. an honor. It's a privilege to help other people and to see the miracles. And in my office, I have a sign behind my head that every day offers an opportunity for a miracle. And I've seen many of them. I mean, absolute miracles. Yeah. And what a privilege to be able to do that. Yeah. And uh, I've, in the last week, uh, there's countless moments I've spent uh, asking for guidance that this be an effective communication that mm -hmm. people will have a better understanding, mm -hmm. that people will have uh, some empathy, maybe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and some people will be willing to reach out and to get involved. And yeah. so, uh, thank you. Just tell us how that would be for us. Well, it would make such a difference. The more involvement we have and the more support we have, the more people we can help.
Yeah. And there's so many things we would love to do but don't have the money for that would make such a difference in people's lives. Uh, I mean, we have many other programs besides the medication fund. Yeah. And, and we could do even more things and, and more across the state uh, things than we do now. Jim? We do have a talk group now, a group that gets together the second Tuesday night. Yeah, in this area. At the Stick Center in mm -hmm. Winston-Salem there. A support group. A support group. A support yeah, group that mm -hmm. if persons need someone to talk to, to relate to, mm -hmm. uh, persons that have had seizures are there, parents of those mm -hmm. persons are there, loved ones. Uh, and we have, and and we have people family. from Wilkes County that yeah. come to this. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So you get calls about, um, give us a little idea about uh, a sh uh, coming to a place and when you're called up, so some of the things you'll say. Well, the, the main thing I try to get across is to put, a, a, to look at this positively and not, you know, there's so many, so much negativity in the world about everything that, uh, that I really uh, see things very positively and I see potential. I see when someone comes to see me, I see the potential in that person of what could be, what could be medically, what could be in every way, you know, and, and I'm there to try to gather resources to Bring help. out the best in mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. yeah. What an honor to have you here today. Uh, Pat Gibson with the Wake Forest here. and the uh, Epilepsy Information Services. Mm -hmm. And the toll number is 800-642-0500. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are, we'll give a helping hand. Just give us an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Jim Mitchell and your compassion and uh, the way you've uh, fought to fight and came out with a uh, uh, an opportunity to, to do good and you're doing it. So mm -hmm. thank you all for being here. Thank you thank so you very much. much. God bless you.